Is this us? Wow. Look at all the stuff here. 10 ounces, all told, of my bourbon. Top side of uh, most jiggers is going to be either an ounce and a half or two ounces. On mine, it is two ounces. So because I do have such a large glass, I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir in the vessel itself and then transfer half of it to another. Um, that way I can keep my dilution at the level that I want it to be. One of the other reasons that we stir a cocktail versus shaking is being able to watch the dilution happen in real time. Versus if it's in this shaker tin, you won't be able to see anything. Generally, when I stir a cocktail, I'm going to be keeping the flat side, like the outside of the spoon, against the inside of my mixing vessel. You want it to be pressed up against that side the entire time that you're stirring. When I'm doing two drinks, like this, I'll pair them together, add them, and hope that I can do, it, do this uh, gracefully. When you are properly stirring, it should be next to silent. going to go into your rocks glass. Whenever I express right. a lemon peel, I always point it towards my glass, but heating it up will have those oils come out just a bit more. Oh, oh. If you just kind of squeeze your lemon peel with the yellow side facing your vessel, your, your glass, then you're going to get a lot of oil to come out for you. When we're doing a mixed cocktail, in my opinion, generally it's really nice to work around a more neutral spirit. Um, so white rum is going to be uh, lending itself very well to this. It's already a little bit sweet, but it's not going to have other overpowering flavors. This will be very mild. Um, this is going to follow the 2-1-1 method. So two ounces here, one ounce, one ounce. But I'm going to add as much ice as I can generally to every drink. For standard prohibition era bartending, you want what we call cracked ice. These little cubes like this are essentially just the right size for cocktail bartending. I'm using a Boston shaker tonight, big side and little side. Make sure it has a nice seal to it. Once your hands start to get nice and frosty, you'll have an idea as to whether or not you're done. And uh, to get it apart, which I know is the reason that a lot of people don't use a Boston shaker, you're going to want to hit it a little bit low and at about the 9 o'clock to 8 o'clock position if you're right-handed. And then when you go to pop it, you're going to have one finger on the top, your other fingers on the bottom, your thumb on the back of the big side. And... So I want you to take the small side of your shaker tin and pour it into the big side. Oh, shit. Put it together. Give it a nice hit. I want you to keep going. Your hands are going to start to get cold. I want them to be. Keep going. Alright. Three. Two. Two. One. Right. Like I said before, right. your pointer finger on the top of the little hey. side, your other three fingers on the bottom, and your thumb on the base. Yep. Oh, Wonderful. Give it a little shake if you need to. Make sure that all that oh, liquid gets out. I got this. I got this. Hey. All right. Spices should aid itself well to the uh, uh, to the rum, mm -hmm. bourbon. Yeah. Um, so. Miss Autumn, you have some cognac, but you also got some triple sec. Okay, um, so yeah. what you have is a traditional sidecar. Mm -hmm. um, it's still that two one one build. Uh, two parts of your cognac, one part of uh, Cointreau, and one part of lemon juice. Okay. Um, usually, my uh, my people that like 
uh, wine, they will like cognac, and they will like this. I gave you the same thing. That's really good. 